In the step-by-step -step telephone switching system, dial tone is provided on originating calls as an indication that the switching equipment is ready for dialing to begin. The procedure for obtaining dial tone requires a considerable amount of electromechanical action in the step-by-step -step equipment. This video describes the process. A telephone call is going to be originated from the Pennsylvania 6 5000 telephone set. The first step is to lift the handset off the telephone set base. This allows the switch hook buttons to pop up. This completes an electrical circuit or loop through the telephone set. At the central office, each telephone line has an associated line circuit which consists of two relays as shown here. The relay on the right is called the line relay and the relay on the left is called the cutoff relay. When the telephone handset is taken off the switch hook positions, the line relay operates. The operated line relay will cause a line finder switch to be selected and activated. Attached to the line finder is a vertically mounted set of 10 contacts called a commutator. Each contact is associated with a particular level on the bank assembly. The lowest contact is associated with level 1 and the highest contact with level 0. An offset wiper called the commutator wiper brushes against these contacts as the line finder shaft steps vertically. When the tip ring and sleeve wipers are in line with any given level, the commutator wiper will be brushing across the commutator contact for that level and will detect any electrical signal present on that contact. The operated line relay will cause the appropriate commutator contact to be marked with ground potential to inform the line finder on which level of the bank assembly the calling telephone line appears. The operated line relay also marks the calling line sleeve bank contact with negative 48 volt potential to inform the line finder on which terminal of the selected level the calling telephone line appears. The selected line finder will begin searching for the telephone line by stepping the wipers vertically until they reach the level with the marked commutator contact, and then by stepping the wipers horizontally until they reach the line's marked sleeve contact. Let's look at the line finder wiper action in slow motion. Notice that the wipers have been stepped up vertically to the 10th level and then rotated horizontally to the 10th position where they have come to rest. This is terminal number 00 and is the terminal to which our calling telephone, Pennsylvania 65000, is wired. Our telephone set is now connected through its bank terminal, through the wipers, through the wiper cords, and through the line finder relay contacts over to the first selector. The first selector is seized and its A relay operates over a loop from the calling telephone set. Here you'll see the operation of the A relay, but first you'll hear the sound of the line finder stepping the wipers vertically and then rotating them horizontally. Only after the wipers are resting on the calling line's bank terminal does the A relay operate. Meanwhile, back at the line circuit, once the line finder has connected to the calling line, it causes the cutoff relay to operate, which in turn releases the line relay. You can reference the sequence and timing of these events to the sound of the line finder action in the background. The cutoff relay remains operated for the duration of the call. It marks the calling line busy at its connector bank terminals. Once the first selector has been seized and its A relay operated, it sends dial tone back to the calling telephone as an indicator that dialing may now begin. Now we'll take a look in normal time of the operation of lifting the handset and receiving dial tone. And once again with a split screen showing both the telephone set and the line finder wiper action simultaneously. Normally you will have dial tone by the time the telephone handset reaches your ear.
So here's a diagram of the progress of our call to this point in time. Here you see our calling telephone, Pennsylvania 65000, and it's connected with its tip and ring, the two wires into the central office, and it appears on terminal 00, that is the 10th level and the 10th terminal on the line finder bank. The line finder has been seized by the line circuit, stepped up to the 10th level, and rotated to the 10th position, and rested on terminal 00. Here we pick up the sleeve lead as well, and uh, we go up through the wiper and the, through the line finder relay contacts, and the line finder is tied directly over to the first selector, which will be seized and it's A relay operated over the loop from the calling telephone. The central office dial tone is permanently supplied to each first selector, and the first selector passes it back to the calling telephone where it can be heard through the receiver. In my step-by-step -step demonstration unit, there is only one line finder, but in a real central office environment, line finders were provided on a shared basis. One of the most common arrangements was for a group of 200 telephone lines to share access to up to 20 line finders. If all the line finders were serving other callers when you attempted to place a call, you would not get dial tone, and your call could not be placed until one of the other callers in your group of 200 lines hung up and the line finder became available. In the Bell system, the standard engineering objective was that no more than one and a half percent of the calls would encounter dial tone delay of greater than three seconds in the busy hour. If you are interested in this topic, be sure to watch my next video in the series, Dialing Through the Step-by-Step -step Telephone Switching System. Thanks for watching.